Good morning, my name is Rachel and this is my reflective vlog. For this video, I think I will just talk about what I what are my thought processes throughout um, videoing for my documentary which is Unsustainable Ways in Rivermore. And if I got time left, I'll talk about how I feel about the rest of the classes, I guess. We'll see. Anyways, well, when I first got my group, I was pretty skeptical about it, to be honest, because um, I only know two people out of that group. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think. I think everyone in the group was pretty, um, how do I say this, uh, not too familiar with each other and none of us were quite too eager to take action. For example, we didn't, we didn't have our own chat group until like three days before the due date or something like that. I, I don't really remember. So it wasn't off to a very good start, just to say. I suggested quadrant sampling as a methodology for our documentary but I, I chose it that time because it was the only thing I could thought about and when I tried to ask the other members they were more or less okay with it but then I only then after that I realized that some of them didn't really understand what I was suggesting <laughs> which is a bit a bit awkward on my part because I'm not too sure how to explain it to them Anyway, <laughs> we on the day of the documentary it was filmed, we split off into two groups. And one of them was the interviewing groups and the other group was to take the to take pictures of the quadrant sampling. And I got to admit it was pretty um pretty disappointing when most of majority of the group members decided that they wanted to go for interviewing instead of taking pictures of carrying out the quadrant sampling basically but it's all right i'm not i'm not bothered by that because to be honest i'm more interested in taking pictures and doing the quadrant sampling as compared to interviewing people so it wasn't a loss on my part i was i was thinking both groups were pretty happy with what they got to do but the problem is i just don't think that most of them understood what i was trying to convey to them because quadrant sampling, in my opinion, is not too difficult of a methodology. It's just that, it's just that I really don't understand why some of them couldn't understand what what our group was planning to do. And even through multiple times of explanation, there was still that issue. So I have to admit, this bit of communication error. No, not error. It's more of a miscommunication was a bit um was a bit difficult to overcome i would say i think so and anyway um when some of our group members were editing the videos they give us a a draft where none of the quadrant sampling videos were added which was a bit um, appalling, I guess. That was why, um, more or less last minute, we were rushing to get everything done because we thought that everyone was doing their part and they were doing their part. It's just that it wasn't that complete. And I got to admit, seeing the first draw for the video where it only contained the interviewing part, it just feels like it just feels like I'm being erased or something and the rest of the group of course but yeah <laughs> hmm, I would say I feel quite offended when I look at the video and I and then only then we more or less remedied what was wrong and then it was this we we were trying hard to communicate with each other but I just feel that we aren't exactly clicking I guess 
So it's a bit disappointing for me because, as I say, I really like English, and my expectation of the class was like I will speak English twenty four seven to everyone there, regardless of who they are or like whatever they like to, whatever language they like. So. It was pretty disappointing to me when our chat group was mostly filled with other languages except for English, and then when I tried to speak in English to、um, to communicate with them, it was more like、um, not so English in my opinion, <laughs> if that makes sense. Gosh, this sounded so much more eloquent in my head. I guess that's just the biggest issue I had with. Filming the documentary, and that's how I reflect, I guess. Other than the little miscommunication about members and how I feel a bit um a bit a bit like this isn't really English class anymore because we aren't conversing in English. Everything else was fine. Every every member did their job and. It was pretty fun, to be honest. We get to travel a little, and I get to know a few of my group members quite well. And then it was pretty fun. It was like spending time with friends, even though that we met just a few weeks ago, I guess. So overall, it was a good time, though a bit stressful because we were rushing for the deadlines. <laughs> But that was due to our fault, most likely. <laughs> And anyways,、um, documentary aside, the classes were okay, though most of them were online. Not that I have an issue with them. I don't have an issue with online classes. It's just that I'm a bit surprised by the lack of classwork, so to say. I was expecting essay writing, some comprehension. <laughs> Or maybe even grammar. I don't. I don't know. That's what. That's what most of my English classes did before this. And I must say,、um, I would. I think I would have been a bit、um, happier. I guess with a little bit of essay work. I guess this is because I used to. I used to. I think I still like creative writing. I did a lot of creative writing prior to coming to university, and when I saw that I was able to get into EDE class, I was pretty much prepared for essay writing, creative essay writing to be more precise, or even poetry writing. Even though I, I'm probably not good at writing poems. My favorite EDE class was probably the presentation class. It was when, it was the mo- the most prominent class in my opinion that showcased everyone's characters or characteristics, something like that. And it was very lively, and and everyone was speaking English or try and trying their best to speak English, which is very good in my opinion. And we were complimenting each other, which makes the whole environment something like a like a friendly friendly outing, where we are just meeting up and then we are talking about our experience, which is something that I find really enjoyable. So overall, I guess the most the the best EDE class I had so far was the presentation one, where everyone was speaking. And my EDE documentary was—it was a fun experience for me. I don't know for other group members, but for me, it was really enjoyable. Even though that at sometimes we really had to put ourselves out there, it's pretty fun. So to conclude, this course is probably in my top three favorite courses. Even though I never, I haven't had that many courses yet, and. And wow, I didn't expect to be able to talk nine minutes straight because I didn't prepare a script. Everything just sounded better in my head, but when I put it down, I sound like a cartoon character. I don't know. And I definitely learned many new things. Like I never even got to video editing before this, and communicating with more people, just 
just speaking up, doing things, being myself, having fun. So this class was quite fun. And all right, I guess there is it. So I will be logging out again. My name is Rachel, and this is my reflective vlog for my course EDE. And I hope that you have a fun time watching this video because I had a fun time videoing the clips for this video. And <laughs> that's all. Thank you.